United States Senate Intelligence Committee has released its long-awaited report on CIA torture of detainees, prisoners at Guantanamo after the 9-11 attacks and in ensuing years. Here to talk with us about that is Professor Christopher Pyle, Professor of Politics at Mount Holyoke College. He is also at one time a staffer on the Senate Intelligence Committee. He's author of the 2009 book, Getting Away with Torture, Secret Government, War Crimes, and the Rule of Law. Professor, thanks so much for coming in. Uh, we talked before and you said to me, no surprises in this. It's, it's what I expected. It's what I foresaw. It's what we knew was there. That's correct. Although now it's extremely well documented, but only documented from documents themselves, mainly emails. Uh, they did not, the committee did not interview any CIA officials. There was a reason for that. The Justice Department launched its own criminal investigation so that the committee, the Senate committee, could not acquire them as witnesses. You've mentioned to me before the taping, one of the things that bothers you, one of the things you're disappointed in, in both the Senate Intelligence Committee and the Obama administration is that you feel clearly by design this report comes out when it does past the date for a statute of limitations. Nobody in the government, nobody in the CIA, no contractor brought in by the government can be prosecuted. That's correct. Of course, we could uh, repeal or extend the statute of limitations and repeal the amnesty statute that George W. Bush signed. Uh, that would make prosecutions possible. But that's not likely to happen. Uh, the Republican Party is firmly behind torture. That's, that's a pretty sweeping and tough statement, especially when, when you mention the, the Senate Intelligence Committee. Right now, it is a majority of Democrats in the Senate, not for much longer, in the Obama administration. So it seems like both parties are playing a part in this. No question. No question. They don't want to confront this criminal activity at the highest level. Why do you think that is? Is it just easier, in your experience and your estimation, to just put this out, get it discussed, let it, let it cause fire in these weeks before the holidays, and then get it over with, or, or just to, to avoid further controversy? Why do you think? No administration wants to prosecute its predecessor because then its successor will prosecute it. That simple. Fairly. Sometimes the obvious is the right answer. But let, me, let me talk a little bit more about what you said. The, the Obama administration, their Justice Department delved into it. They, they are not allowing the questioning, they didn't allow questioning by the Senate Intelligence Committee, if I understand you right, of the CIA officials, of the people who were really directly involved at, at, at ground level, at the rubber meets the road, whatever cliche I can think of. They blocked that. Well, yes, but that's bogus because those CIA people could have been interviewed at any time they wish simply by making a phone call to Capitol Hill and saying, I'd like to talk to you about this. The committee would have been delighted to uh, have them, but uh, that didn't happen because they, if they said something, they might incriminate themselves. So no sense talking to the Senate committee and putting on record incriminating statements. You have, I think it's fair to say, Tremendous personal experience in this whole area. You served in military intelligence. I believe you were staff with the J JAG, uh, Judge Advocate General's Office, in years past. You were on, as we mentioned, the Senate Intelligence Committee staff 40 years ago, where, where you became known as a whistleblower. You put out word on military, military surveillance of civilians in this country back in the Vietnam and post-Vietnam era. You say, after everything you've seen, everything you've studied, the teaching you've done, Torture just doesn't make sense, doesn't get you reliable information. Well, supposing it did get you some reliable information, would you dare trust it? Would you lead into battle a group of your fellow soldiers on the basis of information obtained by torture? I sure wouldn't. Not if you respect your subordinates. You'd never do that. That's the trouble with torture. Not that it might not work occasionally, although the Senate committee found it hadn't worked in any of the instances that the CIA cited. But even if it did work, and besides, there are certain things government should not do. Would you say that we should use chemical warfare 
because chemical warfare does kill people? I don't think so. Nuclear warfare? Because it would kill the enemy? No, because these techniques have blowback effects. And the one thing I can be fairly confident about is that the use of torture recruited a lot of suicide bombers for Al-Qaeda. And that is profoundly stupid. If anything comes out of this report, is that the CIA was led by some profoundly stupid people, driven more by revenge than by curiosity. Former Vice President Dick Cheney, one of the architects of the U.S. government's response to 9-11 attacks 2011, uh, in 2001, excuse me, he's appeared with both NBC and Fox News in the day since the Senate Intelligence Committee report. He says valuable information was gained. He disputes some of the things called torture, fit what he calls the legal definition of that activity, which if, if I understood him right, he says a practice that is specifically meant to endanger a prisoner's or detainee's well-being and life, their survival. The former vice president says the situation led to a prisoner dying of exposure, not legally torture, since what was done was not something that would normally be considered deadly, if I understand him correctly. What's your reaction to, to that kind of reasoning? Unprintable. Fair enough. What do you say to people like former Vice President Cheney and others who might agree with him? They say, look, this is a tough world. A lot of unscrupulous people out there, they want to hurt the United States and our citizens. We have to play as rough and tough as they do to compete with and ultimately beat them. What do you say? I say you're profoundly stupid. If you want information to be used for intelligence purposes that you can rely upon, you do it the way the FBI does it. You don't do it the way the CIA did it. The CIA spent billions of dollars looking into various interrogation techniques in the 1950s and concluded from all of that research and all of that experimentation that you cannot get reliable information by torturing people. It went before the Congress in 1989 and said as much. But then when 9-11 happened, all bets were off. There was an administration in the White House that wanted revenge. There were plenty of people in this country who wanted revenge. For very good reasons, they wanted revenge. But it was stupid because revenge only gets you reprisals. And you just create a system of reciprocal uh, violence Flip without side, getting you information. Flip side, obviously, of what former Vice President Cheney and those who agree with them have said, and I, I think this is more in your camp, if you will, people who say whatever the other side, whatever the, the terrorist is doing, that's just not what the United States, what a democracy, what a republic should be doing. It's not who we are, what we profess to be. We're a nation founded on principles and law, and we need to stick to them. Is, is, is that a fair approximation of you, where you feel? I'm with John McCain on that, yes, and with uh, General Washington in 1775. We'll talk about that. I mean, he basically told his officers, we're not going to torture or put to death prisoners of war, correct? That's correct. And he said anybody who did that should be subject to the most severe penalties, including death. So that's where I think Mr. Cheney would fit under George Washington's regime. What do you think is the fallout, if that's right, where the impact on America's position in the world from this report confirming torture against our enemies. It's just what Al-Qaeda and, and others of that oak have always said about us, said we were, said we are. What do you think? Well, we're living up to their expectations. And it hurts us with our relations with many, many other countries. The war on terrorism, foreign policy generally, is a war fought for the hearts and minds of people. The more the United States can act responsibly, the more influence it has. The more it acts brutally, the less influence it has. The more trouble it has. The more suicide bombers it faces. So doing this to people, whatever your morality, is really stupid because it doesn't get you reliable intelligence. It only gets you trouble. Is the world, in your estimation, an even more dangerous place for Americans because of the revelations, the confirmations of what was done? I don't know. The, this has never been secret to the people who have been tortured or the people who know the people who have been tortured. 
So it's probably the report, this information probably doesn't make much difference. They never expected anything better of us, and this has simply confirmed their expectations. Does this act as a chilling factor, do you think? Does this say to current and future CIA people, American intelligence people, you can't do this because there will be reports, there will be talk, it will come out? I wish it would, but I doubt it will. We've done this before. We did this in the Philippines in the early 1900s. We've done things at uh, Abu Ghraib. Um, this will come back to be repeated again, and that's gr very, very sad. Professor Christopher Pyle, Professor of Politics, Mount Holyoke College, thank you for your time. Thanks for your perspective. Thank you, Jim.